Hey everyone, day six of the speedrun account. Now you might be asking, wait Sean, you skipped the number, what happened to day five? Well, there has been some technical issues with that one, so I'm going to have to work a little bit harder on that video before we can actually get to it. But it will eventually be out, though of probably lower quality because of the mistakes that have happened. But let's get straight into day six. Let's get it straight into some three minute games and see how well we do here. All right, hopefully we can get some more Scotch games, some more Philidors in. And hopefully you guys will enjoy today's um games. Well, that's a weird move, C3. I guess he's trying to play D4. But the thing is, he could already play D4. Again, as I've always told you guys, these moves are never good for your health. And now the question is, can I just take here? Um, does taking here work? Take here, pawn captures, queen check, g3, take here. Um, if queen blocks there, if knight blocks, I can take here. It's interesting. Uh, oh no, I think this should work. It's an interesting idea because the idea is, well, I could play here, but I guess my opponent just gave up. He's like, whatever, you took my pawn, <laughs> you can have it. And so this is why you don't move the f-pawn, guys. This is literally the reason why we don't move the f-pawn too early in the game. Because things like this happen, and your position explodes, and it's never good for you. Don't move Freddy to that pawn. So, since we're up a pawn, you guys know the drill. Trade off the pieces, and win the game. Now, let's see if we're going to lose on, if we're lagging. We might be lagging right now, because our opponent's taking some time to think about his move. Which is interesting. Alright, let's move our bishop here. All right, so let's capture, let's move our knight. He plays d4, that's fine. Um, let's move our knight back here just to protect my pieces. If he wants to trade, I'm always down to trade. Trading is good for my health. Giving me free rooks is also good for my health. Giving me, well, I guess he just gave me that rook for free. He didn't see that his bishop could capture. That's fine. That is completely fine. If you want to trade off pieces, that's a bit more fine. That's a lot of fine stuff he's allowing me to do. Can I play even here? Then he checks me, and that's annoying. So let's just trade here. Um, let's just castle. Develop my pieces. Attack his queen, develop this queen. Move my pieces to nice squares. This is just textbook win, textbook win. All right, if we trade off queens, we immediately win the game. So let's try. This game is all but one, but that doesn't mean we should be, you know, get relaxed, you know, start just drinking coffee or something. Not the best time to do that. We need to make sure we can end the game because too many games, especially at this level, Completely won, but it ends up not being a win. Why is that the case? Usually it's because of, well, simple mistakes people make. All right, let's play knight here and try to trick him into thinking he can play this move over here. Then I can just take it for free. All right. Oh, did I mess up? That's the real cue. Nah, I can just play queen here and just trade off pieces. Would you like to trade off pieces, kind sir? Oh, you want to give me free queen? I'll take free queen. Now, can I check over here, or should I just take here? I'll just take there. Free pieces, free piece. And we won the game. All right, not bad, not bad. Next game, Philidor, Philidor. Lots and lots of Philidors. Attack the pot and see what he wants to do. Is he going to defend it, or is he going to forget about it? Let's see, let's see. Alright, he defends it. Let's play pawn e5. Get our pawns in the center. Mainline Philidor, bishop c4. Ah, he took. Taking is not good in these positions. Oh no. Why do so many people play bishop e5? It's not good. You just gave me a free tempo. Should I play knight bishop here? Let's play bishop there. Try to win the pawn. Obviously not right now because our king is on castle. We'll just castle next move. Make sure our king is safe. I think my opponent's planning either this or this. 
And both these moves are not good. So hopefully my opponent doesn't do it. Good. Dodge for a bit. He was about to fall for it. But eventually he knew better. Alright, so now we can play knight. Oh, let's play rook here first and then play knight c5. If he plays a3, we play bishop back this way. And then we can play knight c5 now. Attack that bishop. Ask the bishop what it wants to do with its life. I'm threatening to win the bishop, so my opponent better play something like queen e2. Or not. Just give me the free pawn. I feel at this level, so many people just blunder and give free pawns, so it just becomes an easy victory. Since we all know how to exchange pieces at this point. Hopefully, since I've been repeating it a lot and a lot and a lot in, all, every, in every video I've been teaching you guys. This move doesn't look too good, to be honest. I mean, I, mean, I can just kick it away with either of these two moves, which aren't moves I don't want to do, so. Alright, let's play here, and let's play bishop b6. Uh, actually, I can't play bishop b6 yet. I have to play a move like pawn b5. Let's see, thinking of knight g5 first. Knight g5 can always play like queen c7, just defend it like that. Alright, let's play pawn b5, planning bishop e6. If we play knight g5, we play bishop e6 anyways. Um, yeah, let's play bishop e6. Queen c2. And then, I don't know, move our queen somewhere. Huh. Question is, is this good for him? And I don't think the answer is yes, because I can take his queen, takes my queen, I take back. And I get a rook for a bishop. It's peculiar. I got a rook for a bishop for free. Um, now I could play b5 and just say, hey, I get this pawn for free. And I guess I'll do that, because it seems to work out for me, since I've done these tactics so many times in the past already. So, why not? We're already developed, nothing to be scared about. Um, alright, he attacks my piece, let's just move back over here. Place rook here, I move my rook here. I mean... We have a rook for a piece, and we have a pawn. Actually, we have two pawns. Can become more pawns in the future. We also up a lot of time in this position. You know, let's just pin it. Whatever. Just pin the piece. See, my opponent just captures my knight, so we get a free back rank mate. If not, we can just trade off pieces, right? Trade, trade, trade. Let's trade pieces. Oh... Alright, let's play g6. Try to play bishop h6, taking advantage of this pin. Like, this knight's, like, out of the game, right? So, let's play here. And then, at worst, we get to just exchange all the pieces off, right? We exchange everything off. And then we're going to quarantine that knight. We're going to move this rook here. Just saying, hey, Mr. Knight, you can't move up. What you going to do? What you going to do? And the answer is nothing. You're going to do nothing. I'm going to move my king here. And then so... Oh. And so my king is going to quarantine the knight. And then... I can use this rook to take all the pawns. And be very happy. Let's check him over here. <laughs> the knight kind of got stuck over here. It's kind of funny. And now we're over 1300. Alright, let's play my specialty, the pawn c3 variation. Tricks so many people. And this is something that's very important, putting up pressure. And you see, my opponent just gave me the center over here, which already gives me a great um, position. Um, let's play a4. Say, hey, do you want to push your pawn? If you push, I'm going to push. And if you do this, well, I don't even have to capture that pawn. Let's play knight, knight c3. And just say, hey, I can capture back anytime I want. You, on the other hand, cannot. Let's just push here. If he's smart, he'll play bishop g5 instead of bishop e7. Let's see how... Oh, he doesn't move by there. Let's play bishop here. Move my bishop the block. Now the question is, do I take here? Probably not. 
Um, actually, no, I might. Because look, that knight is not a. He, he's gonna have some very sketchy pawns over here, which is an issue for him. So we're down a pawn, but as you guys can see, these three pawns are basically one for me. Like they're free pawns. I can push this pawn next, and like, where are his pieces really going? That's the real cue. That's the real question here. Like, where is this knight going? Is it going to come here? I just kick it. Thought it would go away. I have absolute space advantage here. H3, kick that knight back. And then we take here, I guess. And if he checks me, I can play knight c3. Like, he is in. Like, this move does not gain any tempo whatsoever here. If he plays queen here, I just play queen e2. A move I want to do anyways. Um, alright, now we just castle. We cackle. I mean, we could have won the pawn here. That's true. Ooh, now, I could open up his king here. Now, the question is, can I take advantage immediately? Knight g5 is interesting. I could push. Then that bishop stuck back here. Kind of like pushing here, to be honest. Might not be the best move, but... Now that bishop's kind of stuck. Um, let's play queen e2, as I said before, try knight e4, if he plays g6, I can play knight e4, attacking this, and threatening knight f6 check. So this was the idea behind this move. And if his light squares become so bad, then we can win even more. Now, do we take here? That's the real Q. Yes, we take here. And then... We have a super nice tactic in this position. I want you guys to think, well, what would you do in this position? If you can find the best move, you know, I'll give you, I won't give you anything. It's not, it's, I can't really give you anything. But if you found this move over here, well, good job. It has to do with this pin over here. The queen is lost. No matter what, what he does. If he doesn't take, I pin the queen to the king. If he takes here, I take the rook and he's forced to move the queen back. So, our opponent is in a lot of trouble here. And this all happened because he has no space. He had to waste so many moves trying to castle. His knight's in a terrible square. His bishop's on a terrible square. His king's on a terrible square. His rook's on a terrible square. And his queen's on a terrible square. In fact, every piece of his is on a terrible square. While each one of mine are on very good squares. Maybe not this rook on f1. But if we could move it to like the c file, it'd be great as well. Now, my opponent's probably going to go for that stalling strat, in which he waits for his time to run out. So, let's see. Let us see what he does. Our opponent gives us his queen for free. That's good for me. All right, I got my rooks on the squares I want them to. I wanted them to be on. Now we're just gonna play our rook over here, run and checkmate in one, and you will see how useless his pieces are. None of these pieces can come to the aid of his own king. And so we checkmate in one, no matter what he really does here. Like there's no stopping this. <laughs> he got his knight back in the game, but alas, it was too late. So let's do this. All right, 1283. Um, let's play my knight f3 variation. My favorite, because we get d4 and c4 in. d4, c4. c4. Check, knight c3. Knight c3. Anyways. And now we have two strong pawns in the center. This is why I like this variation. And also, not many people who play the Scandinavian know what to do in this variation anyways. So, that's why I like it. Huh, that's interesting. Um, do I play here? Play huge. Tick, 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 tick. No, why not? Let's see what he does. And now we get rook d1. This knight actually has no good squares to go to. And now we play pawn e6. This is a very common idea. Basically locking in this bishop, sacrificing a pawn. So that we can go for some checks over here because he played pawn h6, which is a major weakness. 
and we can exploit it right away right here. And we win the game. All right, so this is one of the weaknesses of Karakon, but a little bit harder to take advantage of your opponents better. All right, so, so why do so many people play here? D4 is the main move because, well, you're getting space immediately. I don't know why people go for this variation. It looks, it looks kind of wonky. Bishop b5 again? How many How many of you guys think he's going to play bishop b5? So everybody has played bishop b5 so far at this level. I don't know why so many people like it. At what level? Oh, he didn't play bishop b5. I am surprised. So the reason why bishop b5 is bad is, as you guys can see, like I'm going to play c6 anyway, so you're just helping me out over here. Probably could have played b4, maybe knight takes. Possible. Possibility. Let's play knight here. I'm going to have little space trade-off pieces. We can also put the bishop on this diagonal over here, which is very nice. Let's play a5. Force him to play like a4 or a3. a3, and now we capture, and now we have double bishops. Now, you might think, oh, double bishops is very good. Now, it usually is, but you have to be careful. If the position is closed, which this position is semi-closed right now, the knights can become better. Can be better. So we got to be careful here. Make sure that they don't, that my pieces don't just remain bad. Because otherwise, it's not going to be too good for me. So I'm going to try to open up the position. Ooh. Don't like this move by him, actually. Now he has a weakness on b4 for me to try to explain now. Creating weaknesses in your position. Big no-no when you're against play playing against me. Because I'm the one who will take advantage of them. Ooh, give me an open file as well. That's pretty good. Oh, well, my opponent just gives up the pawn. He's like, you know what? You want it fair and square. I guess, I guess you'll take it. Why not? Threatening this move over here. So my opponent has to do something here. But he was very kind to just give me this. So, hmm. Question is, do I just want to move, flop my rook down there? <laughs> um, Actually, probably not. Let's play like f6 just to defend my pawn. Make sure no silly shenanigans happen on the back rank as well. Um, hmm. Let's play bishop c5. My bishop's job was finished here anyway, so. Maybe I can play bishop over here. Um, actually, since this file is not that useful anymore, I'm going to use this file instead. I like this file. We can threaten bishop here. Trying to go, like, bishop takes f2, I guess. So now we play bishop here, attack that rook. If he plays rook here, I just capture. Because as we all know, trading pieces is good for one's health. Ooh. He allows me to just enter the position here. So enter I shall. Now, this piece is kind of stuck. Hmm. And I get a free pawn as well. It's a plus. Um, I guess I'll take it. Free pawn is a free pawn. And then I'm just going to promote this pawn. All the way to victory. If he pushes, I'll just push over here and just be like, nope. No can do. You're not pushing anymore. And at the very worst, I can play queen e7 to defend this pawn. That's the critical pawn in this position. And now, I suppose I march my way to freedom. Uh, march, march, march. March, march, march. Does he have any threats right now? He might be threatening knight takes h6, which is kind of annoying, but we'll take here. A free knight is a free knight is a free knight. And he's threatening checkmate, which is slightly annoying. So let's play queen here. Ooh, we need to be careful not to get checkmated, actually. Or queen here. Queen here looks better. Knight takes h6. And it, it, this queen protects the square as well, which is the important square. Well, I guess he wants to go for that, which I think is a very bad idea for him because I can just take his. So, because I can just take his rook. Like, he shouldn't be going for material in this position because he doesn't even get it. Because I'm attacking his piece over there. 
Now, I need to be careful still. I need to make sure he can't checkmate me. Still a possibility. So need to be careful about that. But if I do that, I should be fine. Place queen here and just move my queen over here. And just say, I'm protecting everything with my queen. And this pawn, well, what are you protecting this pawn with? I'll take. I'll push. I'll push. And we went on time. All right. This is probably one of the most difficult games we've had so far, but there really was no fear of us losing there. All right. So let's play an Italian game. Italian, Italian. Haven't played one of these in a while. Let's play c3, main line. And if our opponent plays the best move, which he does not, we just gain the center. We just gain the center here. Life is good. Knight c3. We just play bishop e3 here. Or can we push? I think we just push here. And say, hey, if you play here, I'm going to play queen a5, check and win your bishop. Which my opponent just lets me do. So how nice of him. Very nice. Very nice, very nice, very nice. But my king does get in the center. Because you capture here and my king's in the center. Kind of annoying, but I'm going to make do. Or he doesn't do that, actually. He lets me get my king out. That's interesting of him. I can play here, pawn c6, capture, capture. No threats by me, so not a good idea. So I guess we just move our bishop here. Just saying, hey, you're going to weaken your dark squares. I'll happily take advantage of them. If you want to weaken your light squares, I'll happily take advantage of them too. I mean, and so we just win the game, I guess. Because our opponent's making so many square weaknesses here. Light square weaknesses on the queen side, dark square weaknesses on the king side. I mean, I don't know what my opponent's doing, so... All right, let's do this game. Let's do this as the final game for today. Let's see how well. Now, somebody wanted a scotch game, so we'll go for a scotch game. Why do people do this? This is terrible. I've said this in the previous video as well. Don't capture there. Play bishop c5. Gain tempo on my knight. Don't just let my queen be come out in the center for free. Wait, what is this move? Huh? Giving me a free pawn. Scotch game can't be... This powerful that my opponent just blunders pieces on like the first move. All right, so my opponent does get development. I do give him that. He does have development, but he is missing a pawn. Is this good for him? Probably not. Most definitely not. You know what? Let's just play g3 and sure we create light square weaknesses, but who cares? He doesn't have his queen. My king's under no attack. I get f4 in. Hmm. He wants to play knight g5 or something. He wants to attack me. That's fine. Let's just play knight c3. You play knight here, I just castle. Or let's play knight here. Let's just trade off bishops. You want to give me a bishop? I'll, uh, I'll take a bishop. Oh, let's play c3. I really like this c3 move. I really do, actually. It's one of my favorite moves to play in a chess game. Alright, now I like f4 because it does win the piece. Winning pieces is good for your health, my friends. Always remember that. I'm going to take with the bishop so his rook can't come down here. That would be a little bit annoying. Not that it would be the end of the world, but why make things more complicated than they should? So, it looks like an easy win for me here. It looks like a very easy win. My opponent's thinking. In the end, he came up with this move. Is it a good move? Meh, debatable. Alright, let's just move my knight here. Just say, Bishop, if you want to come out, I'm going to take your b7 pawn. Take it for free. If you play b6, then I just move my bishop back. 
I could have checked him over here first, to be honest, but uh, no, no. I didn't lose anything, so it's fine. Oh, this move was kind of, actually kind of trolled by me, though. That's fine. Let's play g4. My opponent's getting a lot of tempos on me. It's kind of annoying, to be honest. Kind of annoying. Let's play rook here. Let's develop my pieces, trade off pieces. Sean, that's always been your mantra. Don't mess it up now. Don't let this be the game you lose. Ah, I'm probably not losing this game. There's literally no way I'm losing this game, but who knows? It's, anything is possible. So take that. Anything is possible when you're a Sean Lay. If he wants to trade pieces on the F-file, you know, I think you guys know how I think about that. I'm very happy if he does that. So if he does, the next move is going to be like knight d2, control the c4 square that my opponent's controlling twice, and it just castle. So let us see what our opponent does. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba. he has disconnected. It's kind of unlucky. He will lose in 17 seconds. It's not like he had much time anyway, so. Hopefully he, this was a real disconnect and not just being a sore loser. Never do this, guys, in your own chess games. If you lose, lose gracefully. If you win, win valiantly. And we win. All right, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Last game for today. Let's do Sicilian. We did enough Philidors today. Too many of the same uh, motifs already. Let's just play this. This is one of the Fisher Sozin, I think. Uh, I forgot. Something like that. Fisher Sozin attack or something. Of the sort. Now bishop e5 check. Guys, don't just play a check because you see a check. Okay, guys, like, what is this move? You're just helping me. Like, why are you doing this? Why are you helping your opponent, my friend? Why are people so kind? Now, if I played this, he has bishop there. Let's, let's play knight here. Let's play knight there. Queen c7 ideas. Huh. It's an interesting move. I'll just capture. These moves are usually not too good for um, the side playing it. And there's a very good reason why. There is a very good reason why. Now, will I be able to show? Well, already you can see that these pieces are not probably not where they should be. If I play here, he plays bishop f4, then play bishop d6. Yeah, that's good for me. Though he could sack the rook for our dark square weaknesses. So There's a possibility. It is the realm in the realm of possibility. Because my bishop wants to see it's not the best piece, but... Is it the worst piece? Probably not. Play rook here. Spin Mr. Knight. And if he plays pawn c3, then I play pawn b5, trapping this knight. So actually, he's in a little bit tough situation because I'm turning e5. I guess he just says no. I don't. Know, he doesn't care. The threat on e5 was um, not a threat whatsoever. I guess to him. Let's, let's play bishop e6. We're developed. We're fully developed now. Usually in Sicilians, if you get d5, then you're usually fine. Like that's the point in which you know everything is Gucci. You're not scared of anything. Huh. Now my opponent's playing here, so that's kind of annoying. So let's not allow that. No, active defense is better than passive defense, so. Alright, this is why active... Oh my gosh, what is happening? Free pieces everywhere. Get your free pieces here. Alright, get your free checkmate here as well. Alright, my opponent self-destructed this game, so let's do one more. <laughs> kind of a self-destruct. Another Sicilian? Nope, we're playing Budapest? Should we do a Banco? Still Budapest. I like Budapest. The opening... Ah, my opponent didn't go for it. 
the first opening I used to beat a national master. So, I have fond memories of the Budapest. Let's play bishop here with the idea of just taking. Just saying your your pawns are going to be terrible. Are you okay with that? If he plays e4, I'm just going to take it. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, alright. So he's moving his queen an awful bunch. Let's see if I can take advantage of that. A3, I just moved the bishop back. Because he can't play b4 because that queen's kind of in a questionable position. Let's say that. Do we play a5 or do we play b6? Actually, he's threatening here, I think. So let's play it here. Let's move this bishop back. I understand you. Alright. So now that our pieces are coming together, um. Hmm. A5, B6, what, what are we doing? Let's play Knight E5. And then if he captures, we can have a Philidor-like position, so. <laughs> Let's do it anyways. Let's go for a Philidor-like position. Queen's defending here. That's pretty good. Bishop F5. This is a Philidor, so my opponent is a pawn in C4 instead of E4. Does that change the position? It changes it a lot, actually. So, all right, he's basically saying he wants to play e4. And because he's saying that, I'm going to say no. I'm not going to allow you to do that. Why would I allow you to play something you want to do? And now he has, oh, I have to take this way. Not the way I want to capture, but do it. And now look at, look, look at this pawn in e3. Does that look like a good pawn to you? If I'm being honest, that's what a bad pawn looks like. And if I'm being honest again, is this what we look? Is this what we call a good bishop? If I'm being honest, that's what we call a bad bishop. Let's just defend everything. Oof. I guess you're just a good bishop versus a bad bishop matchup over here. Now, if I play here and he takes double, and he plays rook down here, that's kind of annoying to be honest, but. Should be fine. We should win because he has so many pawns hanging. Ooh, we actually have this nice tactic, actually, if he plays rook down here. We have rook takes c, and if you take my pawn, I have rook takes c1. He's going to fall for it. No, he doesn't, actually. I'm surprised. Let's play rook here, and if he comes down here, then I just block. And I guess we just win this pawn over here, so... That is something. Take those. Take those, my friend. Here I could still do this. Rook takes here, rook takes, bishop captures, then he rook takes and rook captures. I'm up two pawns in this ending. So, should be fine. If he's smart, he's going to capture this bishop here. If he's not, then he won't. Or I guess he'll just resign. All right, so that well, that's it for today. Um, I definitely had fun today. Like we are still on the complete winning streak. We won every game so far, and quite easily each time. Now I still wonder when we're going to lose our first game. When do you think that's going to happen? Tell me in the comments section below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.